Welcome to another unboxing video from the playersaid.com. My name's Alexander, and today we're going a little bit old school. Uh, if the legacy viewers of our channel might recognize my old kitchen table, uh, and it's a little bit echoey, so I'm, a bit, I'm sorry for that, but we are upstairs uh, at my dining room table today because I have a um, pursuit of glory up on the other table. I don't want to take it down just to make some unboxing videos, but we have a bit of a time crunch on some um, some videos that we need to make and get out. Uh, so we're taking a look today at Border Reavers uh, from GMT Games. This is a game designed by Ed Beach. Uh, Ed Beach designed um, Here I Stand, Virgin Queen. Um, so well, he, and so it, he's a very well-known uh, designer from that standpoint. And this is um, a little bit of a different type of game. Uh, it's a multiplayer game. So let's flip over the box here. So it can play one to six players. Uh, and this is a game that, uh, that covers basically like the border disputes and things that were going on in like the 16th and 17th century up, up, uh, up on the Scottish border, basically. But this isn't necessarily a true... Um, whatever the definition for that is, war game in that sense. There's a lot of different um, other mechanics in this rather than it just being like, here's a bunch of armies marching around fighting each other. So like there's there's cattle, there's um, all sorts of different types of, uh, uh, the different types of animals and farms because this is more than just a war game. This is about... Um, economy from an agrarian standpoint and all that. So let's crack this open uh, and let's see what we've got inside of this. Big three inch box, very heavy, like chock full. So we do have a full solo rule book. So yeah, it plays one to six players. We're gonna play this at um, WBC and we're gonna hopefully get six players in and play a big game in this. Uh, but there's full solo stuff in this. Uh, and the full solo rules, uh, it, it both has um, an example of playing it as well, which is always nice for solo play, um, but it has all the different rules for doing absolutely everything and the different setups that you have as well. The multiplayer rulebook, different rulebook from the solo one. And uh, so the, the rulebook, the actual rules, sure, we got a little index, and if we take out the example of play, which would be helpful, 20 pages of rules. So 20 pages of rules to get a six player game in. Not terrible, but a very standard GMT, modern GMT rule book from the layout and what you would expect. Then we have a historical book. This is something I will be reading because even though I'm from the UK, this is something at a period and a, and a conflict is what I'm gonna say that I don't know much about. Uh, and, and I love games on topics that are something a little bit different. Even this. This is wonderful. Not even most historical um, kind of notebooks or designer notes don't have something like this. A pictorial, full-color um, timeline. Love that. Absolutely love that. But learning the history behind the game that you're playing really brings some of this stuff to life. And it... I think it's important to shed light on parts of history that, whilst regionally might be important, I think on a global scale might be forgotten. And looking back on those things, there's always stuff to learn. So we have a set of play aids. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, these little mini play aids that describe uh, everything that you can do with your attack rolls and defense rolls. And then on the back we have our sequence of play uh, through the different seasons uh, with a couple of charts at the bottom as well. And these are all identical, as you may well expect. And then we have um, play aids <clears throat> that are unique for each of the player colors, I would imagine, or the families, I believe is what they're called in this game. Um, so we have Fenwick with their little family heraldry and crest. And then we have holding boxes for different card types, I would presume, but it could just be different. There's a lot of different wooden pieces in here that we'll get to. Um, you, you'll 
our sheep CRT. I don't know if it's a CRT, but it's pretty. <laughs> it looks like one. Uh, solo sequence of play. And that is different from the regular sequence of play here. So I think if you're doing solo, you're going to use this. And the back of these are all different because these are all for solo play. So opposing players draft sheet for solitaire play, solo play aid. But the front side of all of these are the six different families for multiplayer, which is pretty neat, nice little use of resources there. Really appreciate that. Card decks for multiplayer play, single-sided. We have a victory track, which has a nice, pretty tall house that was on the front. Very similar looking, obviously different color, but the very like, similar looking style of building. And then we have <laughs> the bits. Um, there's a lot of cardboard in here. We'll get the board out here in a second. We have two sheets of counters, and as you can see from the back of the box, right, we have those cattle counters. We've got ones and fives. A bunch of these smaller little counters, presumably for things like markers for families and control. Don't know if those go on your plates or victory track. And then on here we have some defensive markers, some expended markers, bastles, uh, and some different attack type markers as well for each of the different family colors as well. And these are all dual-sided. Uh, most of it's the same stuff on the back. So then we have a bag of dice. And these are a little smaller, I don't know, these are probably six millimeter dice. Um, but there is a ton of these in red and blue. And again, not necessarily a war game, but we are going to be chucking a bunch of dice, which is always fun to do. We have some decks of cards, which we'll get to here in a second as well. But let's open up some of these wooden pieces. So, bag of cubes, and I think, I believe, and I will double check, but these are, these are just cubes in all the different colors that loosely correspond to the families. So red, orange, blue, blue, pink, and green. Red, orange, blue, blue, pink, and green, yep. So these cubes all correspond. To, these are player pieces, so maybe we'll divvy those up for everyone. But the most important part, finally the day has come where GMT has put out sheeple. We have a little wooden sheep meeple, those are pretty cute. And there is a lot of them as we go stealing other people's sheep and cattle. We're gonna go wrestling. Uh, and then we have ho horses, and we have a lot of horses. And these are just great. It's nice to see some really bumper components uh, for a game from a company that's normally, you know, Hex Encounter stuff or wooden cubes. It's cute to see bits and pieces like that. So we have decks of cards for the, the three different turns in the game, um, and we will crack. I'll probably just crack one of these open because these are extremely tightly put in here. He says, I can't get it open. Here we go. Come in. This is the longest opening of cards you've ever seen. I hope I'm not the only one that struggles with this. Normally I have a knife handy, but uh, not the case up here. All right, here we go. So again, all the card backs are for turn one. These are all the same. And these are your very typical, extremely thick GMT cards. Uh, if you've played any of the Fields of Fire or Combat Commander, when you get the cards out, it is like a brick. You could throw it at someone. And these are very thick, stiff cards, which I appreciate. Um, so on here we have cards of all sorts of different colors. Um, and so I might give you bonus attack dice on them, or defense tokens, draw random 
lots of different card playing abilities. And if you've played any of Ed Beach's games, think about Here I Stand, card play is a very key component of that. And it looks like that's the case here as well. There's a lot of those. And there's different decks for each of the different years, I presume, that those kind of grow or change the course of the game. And then we have these little mini deck of cards, which I feel like you don't see mini cards from GMT very much. But we have different traits. Uh, we have little sets of cards for all the different families. And we'll, we'll get to this in a second. We have a little event deck. That's a little cool artwork on the back of the event deck, isn't it? So, for the traits, you get cool little things there. Oh, those aren't the traits, we're going backwards. These are the traits. So, Renowned or Ruthless, Grazier, Tireless, just give you a little bonus in different aspects of the game. And the rest of these, I think, okay, let's have a quick look at these. So, let's get the all the green ones, and we'll compare those with the blue ones. I think it's the same set of cards. So if we look, we have a wild card. These are both identical for each of the players. Hume, Scottish, target, 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 warden. Kerr, Scottish, target, 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 warden. And so the Kerr and the Hume are both the same. Okay, cool. So this is an identical set of cards. I don't know if, quite if these are action cards or if this is some other aspect of the game, but each family has their own set of identical ones. Obviously, they've got their backing on them and their names on them, but uh, functionally, all the mechanics on them are the same. And the last thing that we will take a look at is the board which, let's see if I can unfold this reasonably. It's, it's a standard 22 by 34 that you would expect. Um, we're gonna put it this way around, so it's the right way around for everyone. And it's a big one here. If I wonder if I hold that up. The glare is a bit obnoxious today. But uh, I really, really, really like the art style on this. It feels a little bit Euro. It reminds me of something like Orléans um, with the with the heavy outlines and the semi-cartoonish um, look. I just, it's refreshing to see something like this from GMT. Who did the artwork on the map? The map is by, oh. <laughs> so the map for this is done by Christopher Muller. And if you know Christopher Muller, he is a um, former Magic the Gathering artist uh, or illustrator. He did lots of cards for them and He's got a game coming out from Compass Games called Burning Banners, which is a fantasy game that uses this art style. And he's both very professional and very talented, and I'm not surprised in the least that this is him now that I've seen and said that. So that's a look of everything that's in Border Reavers um, before I'm about to be interrupted by my children. Thank you very much for tuning in. I've been Alexander from thepleasaid.com.